how is it going, my friend? Um, in a world of COVID, I guess for me it's okay. So we have so much to talk about. Um, um, so tell me, Greg, how did you go from this like early needle valve thermocouple solution to what I what's the SCASE device, the way that we measure temperature throughout the industry? There, there's, it's a really, a SCASE device is a really simple, really. I mean, if you take one apart, you see like, you know, what is this? This is nothing, right? But there's art in the, in the way it's done because you've got to not lose energy in the water. If you want the right temperature, it's easy to measure temperature. It's not easy to measure the right temperature. So if you want the right temperature of water, you have to make sure you don't lose energy into the surrounding parts, right? So you need it to yeah. be well insulated. You don't want to collect a whole lot of water and having it pool and stuff. And so I fiddled around with that a bit. You know, I worked on that a bit. And then um, Barry Jarrett pointed me to the idea of using a uh, bronze inline filter, you know, like you use for an air tool. Yep. to uh, keep the coffee from plugging up the, an orifice. And an orifice is a really simple flow control scheme. They work great in the applications that we have. And, and once that was done, then it was, really, it was really pretty straightforward. And then Terry said, oh, this is great. And he sold them and all of a sudden that was that. All right, Greg. So if somebody's interested in measuring temperature on their own espresso machine, what should they do and how should they do that? Buy my tool. <laughs> and that's available at espressoparts.com? Yeah, right. And realistically, how easy is it to use for a casual user? Uh, you need a readout device, and you can buy a Type T readout device from Thermoworks um, for about 150 bucks. They're not really very expensive, and the whole system with their readout has an accuracy of about seven tenths of a degree so so it's actually it's not that hard to use you just have to you know psych yourself up that you need the tool and you really do need the tool <laughs> oh yeah yeah you need the tool once you use it that and a coffee refractometer it'll change the way you make coffee uh, i mean i think that the things that i i would go scale first then the, that refractometer and SCASE device tool, and you can make phenomenal, or you have the ability to understand what's going on with your coffee really well. Yes, and this is really, really important because the SCASE device tells you temperature, but it sets up a, a process by which you dissolve ground, you know, the, the soluble parts of ground coffee it sets up the temperature and pressure part, right? To understand what's yep. coming out, you need to have something that measures the dissolved solids that come out. So that's the use of the refractometer. And then in order to be systematic about it and have reproducible results, you need to weigh the coffee that you're grinding and then weigh the amount that comes out and that gives you the ability to measure accurately or to reproduce strength and uh, coupled with time you should get pretty reproducible uh, extraction yields which is the amount of dissolved solids in the cup and then you have really you should be able to have really good process control if your machine is any good and you are any good and your grinder is any good then you can become yeah, I mean, boringly consistent <laughs> then it's all up to your roaster to give you something consistent. Oh yeah, the there's week. always someone to blame it on, isn't there? <laughs> there really is. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, let's get those guys. Man, and there's some interesting work going on in roasting right now. I'm. Um, have you seen the new Cropster stuff where they've been doing uh, machine learning on roast curves? Oh, cool. They now can predict out your roast, I think with like some crazy degree of accuracy one full minute out what the roast curve is going to be it's pretty impressive yeah i like this world it's a good time to be an engineer in coffee it really well, is well it's a good time to be anybody in coffee except for the fact that we can't run a coffee shop yeah yeah unfortunately the baristas are suffering but the equipment and you know well 
Yeah, when there, when there are coffee shops again running full chat, there's going to be really crazy equipment to do it with. There really, really is. I'm excited for, I mean, I think this generation of equipment that's coming out is getting better and better and more and more refined in a way that, I mean, we haven't seen stuff like that in a long time and that level of improvement. And now, I mean, for me, I see more and more barista facing improvements, which are really nice to see, oh. where you can automate the parts of the process that aren't super fun to do. Like stopping by weight is just such a like, oh God, why didn't we always have this? It makes it so much easier. Right. Yeah, that's, um... It's a two-edged sword, the automation thing. Like, I for years thought, oh, I don't want to have anything that removes the manual experience of making and, and serving and drinking coffee because, you know, they lose the visceral element of it. It's not, you know, maybe it's not fun anymore, but I mean, but if you're making like thousands of coffees and they're not fun parts, make them fun. Yeah. And... and yeah. Go for it. Well, and so I didn't want to work on any automation, anything, you know, but there is uh, there is value in it. Yeah, and I think that it's also a question of, you know, what type of coffee drinker are you? And especially when you look at the home market, there's different types of coffee consumer at home. Um, admittedly, I'm somebody who I want the easiest, simplest coffee possible in the morning. So I go for the most automated process possible at home, but then professionally, I like the most complex, difficult, labor-intensive process. And finding that right balance for each user, I think is a really interesting thing that more and more we're able to offer different solutions for. If you were talking to somebody who's Let's say, you know, not brand new on their espresso journey, but just beginning to really get into it. What advice would you have for them to make better coffee every day? Ooh. So, number one, you can't make good coffee with crappy raw materials. Right? So you gotta have good yep. coffee. You gotta have fresh coffee roasted by somebody who knows what they're doing. Right? That's absolutely the That's case. gonna be number one. Yeah. Number two, you got to have a pretty decent grinder. I think people overlook grinders constantly, right? They want the minimum possible grinder feeding a $7,000 coffee machine, right? That's pretty common. I've definitely seen that a lot yeah. and it seems to definitely be the case. I'm going to say consistency in your process is going to be next and then temperature you know temperature control has got to be is the purview of the manufacturer of the machine i mean it ought to be it ought to be that you buy a coffee machine and you shouldn't have to worry about this you should be able to check it perhaps and it should be fine and you should be able to adjust it, right? I mean, there are different environments machines are gonna be used in. Even though, you know, I'd like everybody in the world to have one of my devices, really, in a perfect world, you should be able to buy an espresso machine and it ought to work right, and the fact is that it, they don't, right? So, um, it was great chatting with you as always, and I'm sure we'll probably find a good excuse to talk in the near future. Yeah, we need a good excuse. To die. Well, the, we don't need much of an excuse. Well, Greg, All right. I should let you go. Okay, hey, thank you so much for your time. Sure. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks, and it was fun. It was. Talk to you later. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye.